Jesus Christ is ours. If you're coming to Christ, God can fix anything. Trust God. Don't trust man. Don't trust the house. Don't trust the car. Trust Jesus. Trust him. Trust God in the midst of all things. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Strawberry and I want to thank you for tuning in to Finding Your Way. Daryl and I are in week 10, the grand finale, the final chapter within our marriage series from our book, The Imperfect Marriage, Help for Those Who Think It's Over, where we have been engaging in real talk about real problems and discovering real solutions for marriages today. We are so excited to end this series with a new beginning. That is the title and topic of today's show, A New Beginning. There is a reason that half of America's population is divorced many multiple times and why our ministry email is full of hurting defeated people living in marriages that are painful, empty, and unproductive. Our journey through this 10-week series gives us the tools we need to defeat the odds and make changes within ourselves that will create a healthy marriage. Healthy marriages are created. Remember, marriage is not the problem. It is the problems within the two people that create the problems within your marriage. Marriage is not broken. Again, it is the brokenness within the people that produces broken marriages. God's creation, purpose, and plan of how to live out marriage is not broken. It has not changed. You and your spouse are worthy of a new start, and God wants to give it to you. Let's take a look back at what we have learned so that we can move forward into that new beginning. Stay with us. We have more coming up. beginning. What a phrase of such great hope, a new beginning. Do you know that God wants to give you a new beginning in your marriage, a new start, a fresh start? We've been through a powerful 10-week series. This is number 10. We are on number 10 right now, and we're here to encourage you. It takes great time, great courage, and a lot of work. We want you to leave here encouraged. We want you to walk away with there is a God, a great and almighty God of great faith, of great hope, of great healing, with a great plan of restoration for your marriage. You know, honey, we've covered a lot of topics. <laughs> As some people's marriages are kind of falling off right now, but we don't want to leave them there. That's why we've written such a powerful tool because when you look back where we started in week one, where it was lost at first sight, we were lost. God met us in the midst of beyond a mess. I would say beyond a mess. Would you agree with that? It was I would beyond agree with a that. mess. Yeah, it was beyond a mess. And um, a lot of relationships are not beyond a mess. And they start where they, right where they're at. You mm -hmm. know, and you deal with right where you're at to, to get to a new beginning. And that's the ultimate goal of a relationship is to be able to get to a new beginning because we all have to have a, I would call it a makeover. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you need a whole makeover uh, over things in your life, relationships. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, because when you do get a makeover, that means you're being restored mm -hmm. in all these other areas. Things have to be repaired. You know, hearts have to be repaired. And, and that's what God is really all about, repairing the hearts right. of his people. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, don't try to be perfect because we're not perfect people. Mm -hmm. um, just try to uh, take a new direction and, and, and a new road and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and walk through the things that you have to uh, walk through. I always say, my whole saying is, you got to go through to get to. You got to <laughs> go through some things, you know, to get to where you need to get. And if we can understand that in, in relationship, you know, you're going to go through some things. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, but if you trust God and believe, you know, the word of God and trust God, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 talks about it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And he will. He will direct you through all things, you know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficult challenge that you have to face. Because marriages face challenges mm -hmm. and, we, and we have to learn to... Uh, fight through them and, and know that the enemy wants to deceive us because he wants to break, break us apart. He doesn't want us to come to uh, the place where 
it, it's a new beginning. Right. He, 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 he's created chaos. Uh, you know, chaos, you know, so it, it won't be a new beginning. So, but there's the hope. There's the hope of, of having new beginning. Uh, we know it. We, we've had new beginnings. Um, we've had some down roads. We've had some dark roads mm -hmm. and we've had some ugly roads. But, you know, we know that God is the God of all, uh, all things and all things are possible because of him and not because of us. If we can get beside <laughs> ourselves, more than anything, if we Isn't can get, that the truth? if we can get beside ourselves. And, and allow God to uh, do the surgery mm -hmm. and, and do the healing process that he needs to do in our hearts. Um, things work out for the good. Yes. God has met us in the middle of not only our mess, but our dysfunction, our brokenness, our bitterness, our anger, our rage, our behaviors, our moods, our attitudes. Mm -hmm. We had lost everything. We had lost all of our money, we were living in my parents' basement when we started this work in allowing God to come in. Right. There was no more money living in the parents' basement. We, both of us, had lost relationship with our children mm -hmm. because you and I bring that blended family dynamic together. God had to meet us right in the middle of our mess, right in the midst of parenting, which we didn't know how to do. God had to meet us right in the middle of marriage, which we did not know how to do. Right. We didn't know how to treat one another. We did not love ourselves, let alone each other. So you paint this picture of, we're living in my parents' basement. We have no money. We've lost our children. We're trying to make it work, trying to make ends meet. The only place we could look up. And maybe you're in that position where that's not your story. Maybe it was not that bad. Maybe you didn't go down as far as Daryl and I did, but you know what? That should be encouragement to you. That is great hope. If God can meet us in the midst of all of that mess, and if we can sit here before you as restored people, as healed people, where God has come in and just healed our deepest betrayals and our brokenness, there's hope. God can meet you in the midst of where you are. If you allow him to come in, if you will surrender and submit to living your marriage out according to the word of God. Well, we I came in with a whole lot of issues. Well, we came with, we had a lot of junk in our trunk. A lot. So <laughs> just know that. And, you know, you think about David and all the issues David had. Mm -hmm. You know, but what did God say? David is a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. You know, God looks at the heart of a man, a heart of a woman. Right. You know, the change of a heart will change every circumstances around your life. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think we have to really understand that. And I think that that's what happened to us. The, the difference in our life was the change of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Just like David, you know, God loves the, yes. lo loved his heart, you know, and, and if we can get, get that place, get to that place, not, not, our, not our titles, not our success, not our jobs, you know, if we can get to that place that our heart is for God, and, and, and God will do all the rest of the work that he needs to do. That means I need to change my heart to participate in God's plan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, people don't want to participate in God's plans together. They want to participate on one side. I remember we were like that, one side, my ministry, my ministry, we, right. you know, one, you, you can't, it's not, you can't do it that way. Right. You know, you, you have to do it. We in this together, you know, we in the ministry together, we in, in the plan of God together, we can't be one-sided. We got to uh, come to a, a, a complete place of surrendering, um, in agreement with finance. We're going we're gonna to be tithers. We're going to be 10% tithers. God gets his first. We, we're not going to argue about this no more. We're going, exactly. this is the way we, we got to need to settle some things. And that's what happens for a lot of people. They need to settle some things. We had to settle a lot of things, but we were settling things piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And I encourage, I encourage the people that are watching this, settle things piece by piece, step by step. Yes. You know, don't, don't, try to, don't try to build everything in one night. You right. know, it's a process. It's a process from where you come from because her issues are not my issues and my issues are not her issues. Mm -hmm. Those are the issues that I have to deal with. Those are the issues that she has to deal with her own. And when she deals with your, your own issues, what happens is we come back to the table and then we become a different person because our heart has been changed. Absolutely, and we were so excited to write this book because the demand is so great. So the Holy Spirit brought us together to testify to the great power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to testify what it looks like 
to put God in the center and God first with two willing people that will come together and say, yes, we finally surrender. We are going to do it God's way. And we hear so many times out there that, oh, marriage takes work. Marriage takes work. And we just roll right over that sentence. This is the work that it takes. This book has been produced as a tool to help you navigate through the uncharted waters, through the dark times, the deep times, all the way down to the smallest things that we don't think matter, the moods, the attitudes. We went through all these chapters, lost at first sight. We talked about the importance of, number one, putting God first. We talked about the chap- in chapter two, God's vision of love, gaining that perspective of God's vision of love through biblical perspectives, through the word of God. We Amen. talked about the heart of the matter. We talked about the heart change and the mind change. And I love when you preach. I love what you say. You talk about faith. Faith is a commitment of the heart and the mind. It doesn't mean just going to church and praising God. This is going to take a whole lot more, a restored marriage, than just church attendance and a shout of praise. It's going to take work. We keep it real. Well, so when you talk about that commitment, <laughs> what is it? Well, it, well that faith commitment is, is, is really strong. And when you think about the different people in the Bible, it was their faith you know, that, that made them well. You know, mm-hmm. you think about the woman with the blood issue for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, she thought to herself, you know, if I could just only get to Jesus. You know, it was her faith. But it had to take her heart and it had to take her mindset mm-hmm. to be able to get there. Not, not one of them. You needed two of them. You needed your heart to say, well, I need to get to Jesus. Right. But my mindset had to get me there through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment and be healed immediately because of her faith. You know, and, and, and that's what... God does. That's what God does in relationships. You know, he heals you through the process of having that mindset and that heart set that I need to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that I need to get a new job or I need to have a new car. It's that I need to get to Jesus and have this commitment to get to him with my mindset and my heart. And what and and that's what was so great about us, because we knew that we didn't need the stuff. We knew that we needed him. God, we needed to get to him with our mind and our heart set, but it had to be changed and where we got to the place where we got to him, just like the woman with the blood issue, and she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. And it was a process. It wasn't just she got there. She had to go through the crowd mm-hmm. to get there. Absolutely. And it's a process in everything that we do, and it was a process in our life we, um, we had to go through. We had to go through this whole process of getting to know who God was and allowing God to you know, minister to us and allowing us to take back, you know, our own selfishness and our own self-will and, 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 and moving into a different place in a different direction. And then that's when the strength started to come when you started to grow. Yes. Yeah. Money couldn't heal us. Money couldn't wash away our sins. Money didn't make us speak to each other with kindness and gentleness. None of these things that we tried, your fame didn't bring us to this great place. Your fortune that was had and lost didn't bring us to this great place. The outside, we've had it all and we've lost it all more than once. None of our things ever made us right. None of our things ever brought us to this place of freedom. And it's a change of the heart and the mind. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, it says, let God change you into a new person by changing the way you think. It has to start with our thinking, pouring God's plan into us, pouring God's love into us. Once you get the word of God in you, you know where to go with the word of God. It's your direction manual. Then you lean into the Holy Spirit to say, change my heart. God, change me. Remember, marriage is not broken. Whatever God creates is good. Whatever God creates is powerful and strong. Marriage is not broken. It's the people that come into the marriage that are broken that produces the problems within marriage. So we have to come to that place where the word of God begins to become centered in us, surrendering to the Holy Spirit, safeguarding our lives, being um, honest and bringing all of our things to the Holy Spirit, allowing us to do a mighty work inside of us so we can become different people so we can come together as one as whole people my wholeness in God is what makes me the better half to you you don't make me whole God makes me whole so I can become your better half and God is is 
your center is your all and what an amazing gift it is now to be in a marriage with a powerful man of God that serves God, that loves God. And that has brought just great restoration, not only into you, but to me, into our family, into our children in every area of our life. Well, you make a good point here, and that's so, that's so true. Uh, and, and what you said about, you know, uh, marriage, is, marriage is not the problem. You mm -hmm. know, it's the people that are broken in the marriage. You know, marriage do work, you know, and, and God created it for good. Mm -hmm. But we come in with all these, you know, we come in with these broken issues about ourselves, and, you know, it's a major struggle in that, you know, being broken. If, you, if you're broken and you're not healed inside your heart, um, you can't really walk in a healthy way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just like you were talking about Romans 12 too, and mm -hmm. what it talks about, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. There has to be a change. There has to be a shift of your mindset. Right. You know, if that mindset is never changed and never shift, then we can never, we can never participate in what marriage is all about. That's and we will always be selfish. It will always be about you. You, I mean, because it was clearly about me most of the time because I wasn't changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't have that new mindset. I didn't go through that Romans 12 too. Uh, the washing of the mind. The mind has to be cleansed from all the, you know, all the issues, I would say, mm -hmm. more than anything. Because there's a lot of issues inside of us that we have to deal with. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of brokenness. There's yes. a lot of pain that we all have to be healed from to be able to come to a place to be clean, purified and washed and be changed forever. And it's through the word of God that changes people and it's through the word of God that changes marriages too. Yes. Because if you get changed, the marriage will change. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And we even discussed in these 10 week series, we talked about the spouse in waiting. If you are the husband or the wife where your spouse does not love you. Maybe you're watching today and that's you. There's a chapter in this book just for you. Maybe you're watching and you say, I'm willing. Maybe you're excited and you go to approach your spouse and you say, there is a way to get our marriage back on track. Not only get it back on track, but bring it to a powerful place. What if your spouse rejects you? Is there still hope for you? There is. There's hope for you and there's help for you. There's a chapter in here just for you. We haven't forgotten about you. God hasn't forgotten about you. We address that. You and I have walked through and worked through. You and I have done the work. I mean, we had to fight the good fight of faith even when we were fighting dirty with each other. We were not nice to each other. We didn't respect each other. We weren't kind to one another. Me, myself, and I, you and I even fought about, well, they're your kids, not my kids. <laughs> they're my kids. They're not your kids. Come into a place of love and understanding where God's word says there are no stepchildren. You can't choose the parts of me that you want to love or that you want to pour into. When you come together and two become one, you love all of me and I love all of you. Now we become a we. These are our children. These are our finances, our responsibilities, our home, our hearts, and our minds that are supposed to be living testimonies to the word of God. It becomes a we. Well, yeah, it becomes a we because what happens is, is we, we learn how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Not only talk to each other, but we learn how to treat each other. Mm. You know, and, and that's something that we all need to get back to, you know, in our relationships is learning how to have that respect and talk to each other in, in such a way um, that we show our mate that we respect them. You know, regardless of what's going on, you know, even when I'm tired and even when I'm in a bad mood, you know, I, I need to know how to control what comes out of my mouth, you know, and we all need to learn that, you know, that's so important is learn how to control and don't point the fingers. Because once we point the fingers at our mates, you know, three fingers are pointing back at me and saying, you got a problem too. So we always, <laughs> we always need to remember that. Right. So, and, and talking and having a conversation and being able to deal with things and, you know, even the hard things you have to be able to deal with in the relationship. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of hard things that come along, you know, with the struggle of kids and relationships and, and money and, and all kind of things. But we have to learn to, to be able to talk, talk to each other in such a way uh, where we respect each other and, and we can we can build off of that. We can't build off of it if we don't 
have those type of conversations, mm -hmm. you know, and we are always in the building process in our life. And yes. we, we, we always need to remember that until Christ comes back or until we abs till we out of here, uh, we gonna always have that place where we need to build in Absolutely. our relationships. Absolutely. And we just want to encourage you. We really want to encourage you. You didn't get to this place overnight. Being broken in the midst of a marriage that's dysfunctional and is not operating according to God's plan in his way or according to his will is a very painful place. But again, we are here to encourage you. What if we just said, God, change me. This book is designed to help you walk through the issues within your marriage and it teaches you how to do the work. We encourage you right now, you can't do it alone. You need godly counsel, outside help. Start with your pastor. Start with getting real. Start with getting right. Start with the me that leads into a we. We want to encourage you right now. All hope is not lost. If you do it God's way, his will will be done. Your marriage will be restored. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Beck. We hope you're enjoying the program. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you struggling to find solutions to challenges in your marriage? Or do you just want to grow closer to Jesus together? Either way, we've got a great resource for you. The program you're watching is based on Tracy and Daryl Strawberry's book, The Imperfect Marriage. Now you can have a copy of this powerful resource. Learn more about the details of the struggles Tracy and Daryl faced in their marriage, how they overcame those challenges, and how you can find your way, God's way. Here's how. There's contact information on the screen, and for a gift of $45, you can own the book and a flash drive with all of the programs. We pray that through these resources, you will find your way on the road to recovering and restoring your marriage, or just make it stronger God's way. We're preaching a word today in the church, and it's weakening the body of Christ. If you just pray enough, if you just put enough money in the bucket, you're going to get a million dollars, get your new car, get you the, how about forgiveness? How about eternal life? Come on. How about freedom in your heart and your mind? That's what's going with us. A life that glorifies Christ. I want my kids to see, I want them coming with me. Every person I see out here, I want y'all coming with me. That's my mindset. That's my destiny. Is my life leaving a legacy for Christ? Can you see the goodness and greatness of God within me? Amen? Amen? That's what it's about. That's our purpose. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to understand the greatness of God because the deception of the enemy comes in and says this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to make your life boring. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take everything away from you. You're not going to have any purpose. The enemy lies. He deceives. He falsely accuses. He makes false statements, a false appearance to lead us astray. Thank you so much for watching today. This has been such a powerful series on marriage. My friends, marriage was never designed to be a place of suffering or to end in divorce. It is a sacred covenant between two people that is to be lived out intentionally according to God's word. We stand before you knowing what it looks like and feels like to be part of a marriage that was hopeless, full of dysfunction, betrayals, and defeat. And we also stand before you knowing what it's like for God to break through a mess. We can't imagine what our lives would look like today had we not allowed God to come through for us. Surely our marriage would have crumbled. God's ministry through us would not exist. Our children would have been hurt and broken yet once again. This book would never have been written and most of all, God's salvation, power, glory, and love through us would not be revealed. God's wholeness awaits not just you, but your spouse too. When we think about what we have overcome through God and our obedience, we stand amazed. He is the God of miracles. Continue to pick yourselves up and move forward. Trust God, not your feelings. If you pursue God in his ways, you will find salvation for your soul and the resurrecting power you desire within your marriage. 
He can and will make all things new if you partner with him. Until we gather next time for finding your way, please remember Psalm 38 two. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Jesus is the way. Bye for now. I hope you're enjoying finding your way. Are you touched by the message from Pastors Tracy and Daryl Strawberry? Did you know that it's just one of many locally produced programs Good Life 45 brings you each week? For example, we bring you Welcome Home and Welcome Home life-changing stories from our Central Florida studios, sharing the hope in Jesus Christ. Good Life 45 has been serving Central Florida for over 35 years, showing only the best in Christian and family-friendly programming. But we need your help to continue producing these and many other great local programs. Please pray about becoming a member of our HOPE team. You can give safely and securely online at goodlife45.org or send your gift to the address on the screen. Thank you so much for partnering with us and God bless you.